everyone, welcome to our third annual Career Adventures Camp. This is our first ever virtual edition, and I'm so excited to be here. I'm Tia, a college student at Wright State University, and this week I'm hanging out with all of you, right here, virtually. Now is a great time to think about your future and all the exciting career fields that are waiting for us when it's our turn to enter the world of work. And guess what? All these great opportunities are right here in our area, and they don't all require a college degree, and they pay well too. We'll do our best to show you a ton of jobs and careers this week, but anytime you want to know more about a career, or if you have any questions, visit DaytonMetroLibrary.org slash CareerAdventures for a boatload of resources. And remember this website, because you'll definitely need these resources over the next few years of school. I don't know about you, but I'm curious about what people do every day at their jobs, why they love their work, and how they got started in the first place. I'll be starting my own career in just a few years, so I want to meet as many people as possible to learn from their experiences. I'll bring you along with me every day this week to chat it up with professionals from a bunch of different businesses and organizations and get a sneak peek at what it's like to have a career in advanced manufacturing, healthcare, bioscience, construction and skilled trades, aerospace, logistics, and information technology. If you have absolutely no idea what you want to do when you finish high school, don't worry. Visit the library's website, take the quick career cruising interest and aptitude assessment, and join me every day to help figure out what's the best path for you. I have no doubt that by the end of Career Adventures Camp, you'll be closer to seeing your future. Let's get started! For our first day of camp, we're going to kick off with advanced manufacturing. Manufacturing is the largest of the 20 sectors of Ohio's economy. Over 12,000 people in Dayton alone are employed by manufacturers. That's a lot of people, so it must be pretty interesting work. I asked Jim and Sean at Noble Tool, a local manufacturing business, to show us how they use tools and machinery, some of them with diamond blades, to make all kinds of metal parts and products. I'm uh, Jim Bowman. Uh, I work at Noble Tool. And uh, my position, I'm actually the president and CEO, owner of the company. And in manufacturing, there's a whole spectrum of things that go together it, from the beginning all the way through. And some things that we make, somebody uses and then makes something else. Maybe it's doing an assembly and putting things together like a robot. Okay, so what's another example of manufacturing? Something that's near us every day. You can look at almost anything around you, um, even a chair that you may be sitting at at a desk at, uh, at your school. That chair has the back to it and the chair has the legs to it. Now, those are two different things. Then it might have the seat. So that's a third thing. So maybe one company makes the seat and another company makes the back and a third company makes the legs, but then a fourth company will put it all together into one chair. Okay, now we know a little bit more about what manufacturing is. Sean, who has the title of Business Relationship Development, said he'll take us on a tour of some of the specialty rooms where they make some of the parts. Let's go check it out. Something that's behind the scenes here at Noble Tool that does not get a lot of recognition is our grind room. You'll see that if he's got to get a, a very small fraction of material off, he comes in here to the grind room and put, sets it on this plate and runs these grinding wheels to take off material. If you to see a spark on one of these grind wheels, that's one fiftieth of a hair. So you take one of your hairs and you have a spark on one of these grind wheels, that is one fiftieth of that hair. So it's very, very, very minimal, but it's very important to a customer. Sean's telling us about precision, and I'm trying to think of any examples I know where precision is really important. I know it's helpful when making complex machines, like cars. Every single part has to be made exactly the right size for things to work correctly. Every single time a part is made, it must be exactly the right size so it works properly with all the other parts. That's what precision is. And Sean, I'll bet you need precise parts for all your customers. Noble Tool deals with many customers, as you can see with automotive, me cars, aerospace, jet engines, planes that you're flying with. The next time you go on vacation, I want you to think about this. If you look outside of the window of the, uh, of the airplane that you're flying in, you see a big jet engine. We make these little plastic parts that are very wear resistant and they're very, um, they won't melt. So even a jet engine exhaust will not melt these parts. So these little parts, Noble Tool will make them and they go into the aircraft engine. So you'll think about Noble Tool when you look at the aircraft engine that you're sitting looking out the window. And sometimes, there are computers involved in making these parts too, is that right? I think Sean wants to show us one, called an electrical discharge machine. 
One of the coolest part of the shop is the EDM wire that we run here at Noble Tool. And as you can see over here at the EDM wire, it's a small wire that runs through a part. This containment right here fills up with water and the wire runs cutting apart through wire and rotates as you can see on this spool of brass right here. As this part comes from a tool maker, this wire machine, as you can see, takes this small little indention right here that a machine couldn't do and the wire runs out that groove right there to a certain tolerance. It could be to two millimeters up to two centimeters. It doesn't matter. It's just this cutout right here is what the wire does. Sean, it sounds like you enjoy working in manufacturing with these tools. How did you get started? I've been in this for 22 years now, starting a, a corporation that was about 50,000 employees. I started as a material handler, dealing with the steel coming in, weighing it, measuring it, cutting it, doing all that, working my way into a production line where I was running machines, running plating systems where you're putting different platings on parts. And then I moved into the billing part of the industry, which also kind of went with my background in accounting. You notice the name of our company is Noble Tool. We like to do the noble thing. We want to give people careers. We want to give people uh, opportunities to grow. They come in here maybe knowing quite a few things, but then we can teach them the next thing so that they can continue to grow. And I really enjoy that. I coach volleyball in the evenings, and so I like working with people and helping them get better. So that's one of the reasons I bought the company. Of course, uh, wherever my dad was in manufacturing, my dad was a, was a steel worker. So part of that is like I'm really interested in what they, what they do. Um, I worked my first job out of uh, school. I went to the uh, University of Dayton. I got my mechanical engineering degree there. But my first job as a co-op student was working in this factory, this manufacturing operation. And I got to know the operators that made this incredible equipment and in, in putting these things together. So I like that part of it and then providing jobs in some of those careers. So. Okay, so it sounds like there are a lot of jobs at Noble Tool. What kind of people can work there and do I need a uniform or anything? We've got a broad range of employees. They like working with their hands. They like uh, using their mind and being creative uh, and, and helping other people. You can start out not having a college degree. And if you do decide you want to get additional training, Noble Tool will help you with that. We, we have a tuition reimbursement program that we can send people back to school, get additional degrees. But you don't have to have it to start out with. So most of the time, you can just wear casual clothing. clothing um, jeans, a t-shirt if you're comfortable with that. Um, you do have to wear what we call PPE, personal protective equipment. That's what safety glasses are here for. Um, this is going to make you laugh for a minute. These are steel-toed shoes. So I wear steel-toed shoes out here on the factory floor just because if there's a piece of steel that we're using and somebody drops it, I don't want to have a crushed toe. We will take on somebody who can learn the skill, go to a, a joint vocational school, something like that. But once you come in here, we can train you with some of our awesome tool makers and they can get you hands-on experience. So if you're willing to work with others and have a good attitude, that's a big thing. Um, having a, a stick to meaning you can come in and some days are gonna be good days and some days are gonna be bad days. So don't pile on the bad days, look on the good days and it'll balance out. So, but sticking to it and not giving up is an important attribute that I look for as well. Manufacturing is a viable career. As you can see, we have employees in here who have been doing this for 40 to 45 years so as they get closer to retirement, it is very important that we bring younger generations into this skilled labor trade. And there are probably a lot of jobs for women in manufacturing too. I read that women make up almost one third of the manufacturing workforce in the U.S. Women in manufacturing, they can, if they can apply their science and program a machine like computers, all these machines that are behind me, um, many of them have a computer that somehow controls that. So uh, women in manufacturing that have that uh, creative mindset that can use the, the right brain and the left brain together uh, are great, great employees for us. Everywhere around you, something is made. It just doesn't fall out of the sky. Uh, Walmart just doesn't have it in the back. Somebody made it and then put it in that, that Walmart. But those people that are making all that core stuff, that then it provides jobs for other people and it helps everybody all the way around. So it sounds like manufacturing in the Dayton region is really important and there are a lot of jobs here locally. The backbone of the U.S. economy is in manufacturing. Um, everything in my mind, it's like your, your own personal core, right? 
We need people in manufacturing. We need careers in manufacturing so that we can grow. That was awesome. Thank you, Jim and Sean, for taking us through Noble Tool to learn more about manufacturing careers. And remember, if you want to learn more about manufacturing careers, visit the Dayton Metro Library website at DaytonMetroLibrary.org slash career adventures for some resources about these careers. Many thanks to Noble Tool for hosting us today and to the Dayton Region Manufacturers Association for helping us to coordinate this exploration of advanced manufacturing and to the coordinators of Career Adventures Camp. For day two of camp, we'll check out the healthcare and bioscience sectors to learn about careers that keep our communities healthy. All right, see you tomorrow for more Career Adventures Camp.